One of my great privileges as a pastor to bring in many different uh, pastors, preachers, evangelists, and missionaries to introduce you to maybe a new concept of missions that maybe you've never thought of before. And so I want you to pray about that. While I'm on that same, um, uh, same note, we got a call this week from Amazing Grace Baptist Church. By the way, in just a moment, we're going to go to James chapter 3 and verse 17. Um, but uh, they are the ones that, who we partner with for our uh, Ottawa County Fair Ministry. And uh, they have fair ministries, fairs and festival ministries all over the uh, country. Uh, Brother Andy Walters specifically is our missionary that does that, but Brother Andy's probably not going to come up. And uh, the, uh, the man who oversees Amazing Grace Baptist Mission, he said, Pastor, would you put before your people? He said, Pastor, do you have anybody that loves souls in your church? I said, we do. We had a lot of people that loved, uh, loved souls and cared about people. He said, Pastor, do you have anybody that loves to share the gospel and is a soul winner? I said, yes, we do. He said, would you ask them to consider being involved in the Amazing Grace Baptist Mission uh, 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 across Michigan? Is there anybody that would maybe give up a, a day or a week or a weekend and be willing to take a little time off? Or maybe if you're retired, go to some of these different county fairs or even the state of Michigan, the Michigan State Fair, and to be a part of Amazing Grace Baptist Mission. They go to different fairs all over each county and all over, uh, all over the world, and, uh, but specifically here in America. And they go state to state, fair to fair, and they tell people about Jesus. And so I said I certainly would. So would you pray about that? James chapter 3 and verse 17. If you'll stand with me this morning, just one verse of Scripture. We're going to continue our series on, the, um, on living our faith. Now today we're in the James chapter 3, the second half of James chapter 3. We're in verse 17 on a very important subject, a very important topic. Notice here in verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and of good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. This morning, in our challenge from the Word of God and living our faith, we're going to look this morning about the, the living our faith through the wisdom that is from above. Oh, how we need wisdom. How many in this last year have scratched your head and said, I have no idea what I ought to do. Raise your hand this morning. You just scratched your head and said, I have no idea what I need to do. I have no idea what direction to take. My friend, you know what you need? You need wisdom from above. Let's see what God has to say about that this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Father, to have the Pierce, uh, Brother Pierce with us today, be with his wife and uh, their dear daughter, dear Lord. Thank you for the work that you've done in and through them, Lord, all over the world these last many years. And Father, we pray that we might have a part the, to encourage them. And we pray, Father, Lord, we pause. We thank you for those who have served in our armed forces. God, we pray for them that are serving now. And Lord, those that are based all over this world, we pray for their, their spouses and their children. Father, would you please help them? Lord, would you please reach them with the wonderful love of Jesus Christ? Father, bless us this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. And amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Now, we are in this section of James chapter 3. We've looked at a lot of different uh, parts of living our faith, but I want to pick up our reading and, and, and give you the context. Notice starting in verse 13 down through verse 18, I want you to notice how many times the word wise and wisdom appear, and that'll give you the flavor. What is God talking about here? Uh, a question is asked. A transition is made from the first part of James 3, where James is dealing with the tongue. Now, starting in verse 13, there's a transition. God, inspiring Pastor James, says, listen, not only do we need to have God in control of our tongue, but we also need to have God in control of our heads and our hearts. What does that look like? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Notice there are two times of the word wisdom and wise and wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Notice again, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. My friend, let me just pause there. Pause there. I want you to just think about the events that have gone on this last week. I want you to think about the events that have gone on in this world over this last year. Have you wondered how much, you say, where in the world is all of this confusion coming from? Where is all this evil coming from, my friend? It is because there are people in this world that are not operating from wisdom that is from above. 
But then we get to our verse text, but verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above. And notice these seven descriptions of godly wisdom. Count them up as we go along. Is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. This whole section in James chapter 3, starting in verse 13, is dealing with wisdom. Where do you get your wisdom? By what wisdom do you live? Now listen, my friend, the truth of the matter is that you are making decisions every day. You're making small decisions and you're making big decisions. You drive down the street, the, maybe tomorrow you're de- deciding on lunch, and you've got to decide between McDonald's and Burger King. Well, that's not, you don't need wisdom, you just go to McDonald's right there. And, uh, or maybe you're looking for chicken, you go to, uh, you go to Pizza ranch. I said when Brother Pierce came, we took him to a nice restaurant. The aisle of the wait was way, way, way long. And I said, well, let's go get some of the best chicken in all of Holland, Michigan. And I said, it's, it's a pizza place, but you'll love the chicken better than the pizza. And, and, and was I telling the truth, truth, brother? Now listen, you make big decisions and small decisions every day, but every decision that you make, listen, my friend, is based on some sort of wisdom some pattern of thinking, some paradigm by which you view the world, by which you make your decision, by which you decide how are you going to be a man or a woman, how are you going to be a husband or a wife, how you're going to be a mother and a father, what kind of person you're going to be in society as at large. And listen, every single one of us is making decisions, and those decisions are based on what you think is right what you think is true, what you think is correct, what you think is good. Basically, you're making decisions on some sort of wisdom. Now, if we were to take a look at our passage, just kind of zoom back in verse 13, we look at the identification of the wise. We look at the, the question is asked, who is wise? We see the demonstration of wisdom in the same verse in verse 13. From verses 13, 15 to 17, we see the identification of lesser wisdoms and then in verse 17 our text we see the hallmark of heavenly wisdom and then we see in verse 18 the harvest of that heavenly wisdom but I want to point out today I know we've taken some extra time don't worry we're going to get out right on time you say pastor why are you so particular about getting right on time because for 12 years we served in junior church amen I know right now there are some ladies taking care of the babies down in the nursery and right now there's a precious couple over here dealing with the toddler ministry and and listen they're not young they're older than me what does that mean they're older amen than me and we got some people downstairs and they're taking care of the junior church kids and they're watching the clock listen I know what it is when the preacher goes a half hour after uh, uh, noon in, uh, uh, in the morning service. So I'm mindful of that. But I want to point out to you this morning, God uh, takes time and he points out three very deficient sources of wisdom. Notice here in verse 15, this wisdom, talking about the wisdom that was pointed out in verse 14, this wisdom descendeth not from above. This isn't heavenly wisdom, so what kind of wisdom is it? Notice first one, uh, firstly, it's this, but is earthly. Earthly wisdom, that's societal wisdom. That's societal wisdom. You know how you pick up societal wisdom? You spend way too much time in this thing right here. You spend way too much time on this thing right here. You spend way too much time with this thing on here. Listen, my friend, a steady diet and the consumption of media and, 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 and the, what is being put forth, listen, my friend, is both news and information will inform you and then it will also conform you to societal wisdom. Have you noticed in the span of your lifetime that people think differently now than they used to think just a few years ago? See, that's the problem with societal wisdom. The Bible says it calls it earthly wisdom. Societal wisdom is always shifting. You get settled, you, get, you, get, you go, okay, this is what's right, this is what's good. And then a year later, they're like, oh, no, 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 forget all that. Now, now this is what we're doing. And then you get decided, okay, this is what society's doing, and this is what's okay, this is not. And then next year, they're like, no, 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 forget all that. And they move over here. The problem with earthly or societal, with your society keeps changing. 
Not only do people, and by the way, people make all kinds of decisions based on societal conditions. And as society changes, listen, their morals change. As society changes, their values change. As society changes, listen, their behavior changes. As society changes, their, uh, their manners and their motives and their methods, all of that changes because society is always changing. Not only is there societal or earthly wisdom, continue on, but this wisdom that descendeth not from above is first earthly. Number two, it's sensual wisdom. This is self-wisdom. This is self-wisdom. There are those among us, and listen, all of us are uh, live in a body of flesh. Sensual wisdom. That means people making decisions for three people, me, myself, and I. How I many you know a selfish person? Raise your hand. You know somebody that just lives for themselves. Every decision that they make is based on what's good for them. Every word that comes out of their mouth is based on them. Everything they talk about is them. Everything they're interested in is them. Anything and everything that uh, revolves in their world is sensual wisdom. It means what makes me feel good? What makes me feel better? What's best for me? My friend, that's what the Bible calls sensual or senses-based wisdom. Meaning what they can see, what they can feel, what they can touch, what they can taste. What makes them physically happy. That's sensual wisdom. Thirdly, notice the next thing. But this is this wisdom. First you have earthly wisdom, that's societal wisdom. You have sensual wisdom, that's selfishness, self-wisdom. And then we have, lastly, the third type of deficient wisdom, devilish wisdom. That's satanic wisdom. My friend, may I say that I'll just say this very guardedly and very cautiously. We have a mixed group. We have young and old. Uh, We have adults and children in here. Can I just say, my friend, it is no surprise to me the amount of evil that happens in our society. My friends, there are those who are making, and some some make decisions purposely based on satanic wisdom, devilish doctrines. But may I say, there's a, a, a large number of people that are introduced to and indoctrinated with very bad things. Some of them, they stumbled across it on YouTube, Facebook, different channels of media outlets. But my friend, they've been introduced to and they've been indoctrinated with very disturbing things. We look and you see on the news the events that happen different things that transpire and my friend you scratch your head and say where in the world would a person how could a person be so moved or motivated to do something so ugly so hateful and so harmful my friend that source it only comes from one place from the pits of hell by living and embracing these values we see the fruit of this notice in verse 14 in verse uh, and also in verse 16 the fruit of this kind of wisdom there is bitter envying and strife and lying against the truth look at verse 16 for envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work My friends, may I say to you today, if you are making your decisions through societal wisdom, through selfish wisdom, or satanic wisdom, my friend, you are on the path for certain destruction. So what's the answer? You say, preacher, what is the answer? We get to verse 17 and we see the answer. It says this, but the wisdom that is from above. May I say, listen, you don't have to base your life on the sifting sands of society. You don't have to live for yourself or listen, be duped by the devil. You can be given wisdom from God. My friend, there is a wonderful source, a fountain of refreshing truth. Listen, my friend, when once you take a drink of it, you'll never go back and you'll never want for those other things. The Bible says this in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. It says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Listen, my friend, the Bible talks about living in this world, but not of this world. We're called to be strangers and pilgrims in this land, just passing through. I, I never really understood what that verse meant until I went and spent two summers in, in living in India. We, my, me and a group of folks, we lived, we went over and we lived in an orphanage. We helped uh, uh, teach and help these young orphan children. They, they were uh, orphans of lef- uh, lepers. Their parents had leprosy. And until you're about the age of 13, you can't contract leprosy. 
And so they send their children to these orphans and uh, these orphanages while their parents degrade and they die from this awful disease. Many times they're left, and, but we had this opportunity to be there. But listen, my friend, I would walk down the street. We were in there uh, sitting in Cota Junction, and, and nothing felt familiar, and nothing sounded familiar, and nothing smelled familiar, and nothing looked familiar. And I said, listen, I know one thing. I'm not from this place. I don't know anything about this place. Nothing in this place is interesting or attractive to me because everything you ate made you sick. <laughs> Everywhere you went, it was, it was different. Listen, my friend, that's the heart that we should have as Christians. We should just pass through this world. Listen, yes, God has called us to, as Christians to live in this world, but not of this world. Listen, my friend, God has given you a, a life. God has given you salvation. God has given you a purpose. Listen, and you say, why doesn't God just save us and take us home? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Hallelujah. No more sin, no more sickness, no more suffering. Listen, my friend, because there's a whole lost world out there dying and going to hell without Jesus. And you and I are the voice and we're the light and we're the lamp to get that wonderful truth to them. But how in the world is the world going to see Christ in us if we look and act and talk and behave just like them? Because they're living with societal wisdom and selfish wisdom, and some of them with satanic wisdom. Now, my friends, there is a source of wisdom, the fourth source of wisdom, by which you can make personal decisions, by which you can order your family life, by which you can decide and discern what you will watch and not watch, where you will go and not go, what you will be involved in and not be involved in. It is from God. The Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, 234 times uses the word wisdom. In the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 33, the Bible says this, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Do you hear that Bible verse? Romans, chapter 11, verse 3. The Bible says that God has treasures of wisdom. I mean, deep reservoirs of wisdom and knowledge. So let me give you these three truths. Maybe you're here this morning, you say, oh my, oh my. Maybe you're just sitting, you're, you're starting to evaluate your life. Maybe you're looking at your marriage. Maybe you're looking at your life. Maybe you're looking at your decisions, your family. Maybe you're looking at the things you say, you know what? Maybe I have been making decisions based on wisdom that's not from God. Let me give you three truths this morning. Number one, wisdom, heavenly wisdom is from God. Look at verse 17. But the wisdom that is from, say that word with me, above. Number one, I want to give you this truth. Wisdom, real wisdom, godly wisdom is from God. My friend, you better mark her down. You better decide, my friend, listen, that there is a source of wisdom that's greater than you. There's a source of wisdom greater than any university or college. There's a source of wisdom greater than any textbook that's found on this planet, my friend. And that source of wisdom is eternal. That source of wisdom is almighty. That source of wisdom, listen, is God. You and I need to realize that there is a wisdom beyond society there is a wisdom beyond self, and there's certainly a wisdom better than the devil, and that wisdom comes from God. You say, how can I make better decisions? How, how can I have a better marriage? How can I raise my children better? How can I be a better man or a better woman, a better uh, employee, a better employer? How can I be a better pastor? How can we be a better church? Then we better go to God who has the depths of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. Number one, wisdom comes from God. Number two, let me give you this truth. The wisdom from God is available. The wisdom from God is available. Go back with you. You're in the book of James. Go back with you to chapter 1. A verse that we looked at kind of in passing, but I want you to pick up in verse 5. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom. Now we'll pause there. Now I'll just raise both hands and say, you know what? <laughs> Many times that's me. All right? That's me. In my life, in my ministry, in my marriage, in my day-to-day -day life, I'm just like, God, I don't know what the right word to say is. God, I don't know what the right response is. God, I want to be a better man. God, I want to be a better husband. God, I want to be a better pastor. I want to be a better boss. God, I want to be a better American. God, I, I want to be a better Christian. You got to get to that point. You got to get to that point to realize you don't have it all figured out. That you don't have all the answers. That you don't have it all buttoned up. The Bible says, but if any of you lack wisdom, let 
him as who? God. That was pathetic. All right, let's do that one more time. All right, I thought we were going to have, I thought it was going to be pretty impressive there. Let him ask who? God. God. Amen. Let him ask God. Listen, my friend, there are some things that Google doesn't know. All right? There's a lot of things that Google doesn't know. But my friend, there is nothing that God doesn't know. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Now, what's God's response to this request for wisdom? The Bible says this that giveth to all men, by the way, that's a generic term, men and women, people, to all men liberally. That means richly. That means freely. That means abundantly. And he upbraideth not. He doesn't come to you. Maybe you've, maybe you've gone to your mom or dad. Ever had that awkward situation? You go and you ask somebody and they give you the look, all right? Like, are you that stupid? I've had that a lot in my life, all right? Hi, my name's Pastor Rob, and I've had that look a lot. But listen, the Bible says God doesn't ever give you the look. God doesn't ever go, I know we do a lot. We, we do it often. People ask and ask and ask. But listen, the Bible says this, and he abradeth not. And it shall be given him. Number one, wisdom comes from God. Number two, wisdom is available. Listen, my friend, you don't have to bumble through life. You don't have to stumble through life. You just don't have to do the best you can do. You can live a life, listen, guided, listen, guided by the Almighty God. That's the perk of being a child of God. By the way, if you're not a child of God, my friend, it's one of the greatest perks and benefits outside of not having to go to hell. Can I get an amen right there? And getting to go to heaven, can I get an amen right there? Is to have a heavenly Father who hears your prayers. And he answers your request. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. My friend, listen, just don't bumble along in your life. Ask God. Ask God. Get alone and ask God. You men that are in business... You moms and dads raising babies. You men and women that are facing the older years of life and the struggles that come with that. And you say, I don't know what to do. Ask God. Stop what you're doing. Why is it? It is a scientifically proven fact that human beings are the only ones when we don't know where we're going or we don't know what to do, we go faster. Everything else in God's creation stops. When they're lost, they stop. They listen, they look, they smell. But people, we just mash the gas and go faster in a wrong direction. Stop and ask God. Number one, wisdom comes from God. Number two, wisdom is available. Number three, wisdom is demonstrated. The wisdom of God is demonstrated. Notice back in James chapter 3, with this I close. In verses 17 and 18, God gives us a description of living by heavenly wisdom. I want you to evaluate your marriage. I want you to evaluate your interaction with your children. I I want you, if you are an employer, an employee, I I want you to really think about your interactions and your relationships. The Bible says this, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. How pure is your mind? How pure is your mouth? How pure are your motives? The wisdom from above is first pure. And then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. You know who I think of? I think of Jesus. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness, those seven things is sown in peace of them that make peace. Third truth, the demonstration of wisdom is seen in our everyday living. Can I say this? Our Sunday faith should affect our everyday living. Our Sunday faith should affect our everyday. Listen, listen. your Sunday faith ought to affect your Monday manners. Amen? Our Sunday faith ought to affect our Tuesday tongue. Our Sunday faith ought to affect our Wednesday witness. Our Sunday faith ought to affect our Thursday thoughts. 
our Sunday faith, this is a big one for the world outside, ought to affect our Friday fun. Our Sunday faith ought to affect our Saturday situation. Listen, my friend, if you and I are only a Christian on Sunday, the Bible says we better examine ourselves and see whether we're in the faith. My friend, you are making decisions, big and small, every day. You're making those decisions by some source of wisdom. And that source of wisdom is discernible and detectable by you, by God, and by others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, we thank you. God, I thank you, Lord. You just didn't just leave us to bumble and stumble through this life, Lord, all on our own. God, I beg you, Lord, please. Lord, if there's been one prayer that I've prayed over and over other than, Lord, please forgive me, is, Lord, please help me. Father, today I pray as we would examine in our mind's eye our life and our living, I pray we'd be real honest with ourselves and real honest with you. And ask ourselves, am I making decisions? Am I governing my relationships? Am I living in societal wisdom, selfish wisdom, satanic wisdom, or spiritual wisdom? And Lord, I pray if we would discern and discover that we're living our life and living our faith with lesser forms and lesser sources of wisdom, I pray, Lord, that we would repent of that today. I pray we'd recognize it, we'd repent of it, and God, I pray that we would go to you in faith, and Lord, we'd simply ask, say, God, I don't want to live this way. God, I don't want my marriage to continue this way. God, I don't want to struggle with my family this way. God, I don't want all the strife and turmoil and conflict and evilness in my life. I pray today we would seek the wisdom that is from above. Let's stand this morning with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. A time of invitation as the musicians begin to play of invitation softly this morning. If you're here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, today is the day. Oh, my friend, please don't leave here undone. Please don't leave here uh, uh, lost. You say, Pastor, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to get saved. Well, why don't you just slip out from where you are sitting and come down front. We'll have someone take a Bible and show you how you could know for sure your sins can be forgiven. Maybe you're here this morning. A great number of Christians are here this morning. And maybe you examining your life and living. And maybe the Spirit of God has spoken to you this morning about living by lesser wisdoms than what we should. Christian, listen, everybody starts there. Everybody starts at these lower forms of wisdom. It's natural. It's the way the world lives. But God has called us higher. He's called us to be more than just a man, more than just a woman. He's called us to be a Christian, saved by Christ, filled with the Spirit, informed by the Scriptures, and endued with the wisdom from on high. Why don't you ask Him for that wisdom today? If you're struggling with your mouth, why don't you ask God to give you wisdom with that? If you're struggling with your morals, why don't you help God, ask God to give you wisdom about how to get that right? If you're struggling in your relationships, ask God for wisdom. The Bible says He'll hear you. The Bible says He'll answer you. The Bible says He'll delight to give it to you. Folks have come and folks are praying at the altar this morning. One last verse of invitation. 